Hello, fellow travelers. I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. One question that I get a lot of times from people is, how do I manage when I'm in a country where I don't speak the language? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. How I communicate and understand when I'm in another country where I don't speak the language. So let's get started. The first thing to realize is that as English speakers, we have an incredible advantage when we travel in the world. Most of the world has English speakers. And also, English is the most common way for people who speak two different languages to communicate with each other. So as an example, one time I was in Japan and was at a hotel waiting for the shuttle bus to take me to the airport. While I was waiting in the lobby, there were several other people also waiting there for the shuttle bus. And I noticed that nobody else there was speaking English. There were a lot of different languages being spoken by the groups of people that were in there. Some of them that I recognized, like Spanish and French, and others I had, had no idea what language they were speaking. But anyway, when the bus driver showed up, he came into the lobby, and in English, he told us that it was time to get on the bus. So we got on the bus, and the bus driver, again in English, gave us instructions about what we were going to be doing, where we were going, etc. And even some of the people who were on the bus asked questions of the bus driver, and they asked those questions in English. So it was obvious that if we were going to all communicate with each other, even though we were all speaking different languages, the only way that we were going to do that is by speaking English with each other. And that's really how it is in the world. If there is a Russian person and a Chinese person who want to talk with each other, more than likely, they're going to have to do it in English. So that said, you're probably not going to have a problem finding English speakers in most of the places that you go around the world. So your concerns about not being able to communicate are probably overblown. But there are situations where you may be away from the tourist area, or maybe you're away from the city out into the countryside, and there may be situations where you're not going to be able to find people who can speak English. So what do you do then? Well, one thing that you can do is use Google Translate. With Google Translate, you can type in the words that you want to translate, hit the button, and it will translate it into whatever language that you want to put it into. Or even better than that is to speak what you want to say and then have it translate. And it will speak the translation after you've put in your spoken, your English version of that phrase or sentence. So I have done this many times, a back and forth conversation with somebody in another language. Works really well. The thing you want to keep in mind though is use simple language. Don't use complex terms. Don't use slang or idioms, things like that. Keep it as basic as possible because these translation apps are not perfect. So the simpler you can make it, the better you're going to be able to get the right kind of translation. Now, another difficulty that you may find is that you want to go to some authentic restaurant to enjoy really authentic cuisine. And you go into the restaurant and you find out that they don't have an English menu. They only have a menu in the language of their country. So what do you do then? Well, Google comes to the rescue again with Google Lens. And this is an app where you simply open it and take your phone and put it over the top of the text that you're wanting it to read, the menu or whatever it is, and it will miraculously translate that text into English. And it's amazing how it works. And it will work for any kind of language, whether it's a Roman alphabet type of a language, or if it's a script language like Chinese or Thai, or Cyrillic or anything. It's just totally amazing. It blows my mind every time that I use it, that it will translate into English any of those types of languages. So that's an amazing thing that you can use for menus. You can use it on signs. It comes in handy in a lot of different situations. One other situation where I've used Google Lens quite a bit is in a grocery store because you may pick up an item and all of the labeling is in some other language and you have no idea what it says. 
So using Google Lens, you can put the phone over the top of it and see the text translated into English so you know what you're looking at and you can see what the ingredients are in the food. Or it'll help you to make sure that you don't end up buying goat cheese when you thought it was yogurt. But if you don't have Google Translate or Google Lens handy, there is another way that you can manage, and that's by simply asking someone. I have found no matter where you are in the world, people are always more than happy to help you if you need some help. And I can tell you from my own situations and my own experiences, just the other day, I'm here in Switzerland right now, and I was in a grocery store just the other day, and I just had a few items, and I saw that the line for the checkout line with the cashier was very long. But I also noticed that they had self-checkout kiosks. So I've used those in other countries before. Usually when you go up to them, if it's in the language of that country, there's usually a, a button on there you can press to change it into English, and then you can see everything in English. So I figured that's probably what it would be like. So I went over to the kiosk and I quickly noticed that, no, it was only in German. And so I was going to have to use it in German. Well, I know little bits and pieces of German. So I thought, well, I can get through this. I can figure it out. I got part way into it. And then I was at a point where I wasn't sure what buttons I should be pressing. So what did I do? I simply turned to the guy next to me at the kiosk next to me. And I said, could you help me? And of course, he said, sure, I can help in English. So he came over, showed me what to do, and got me through the process. So it was no problem at all. And one time when I was in Moscow, I had just landed in, in uh, Moscow at the airport, and I was taking the metro into the city. And so I got into the metro station, and that's when I realized that all of the signs were in Russian. There was no English signs at all. So I thought I knew which way I was supposed to be going, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I was sitting there staring at the map and looking at the different metro stops and everything and trying to figure out which line I should take and where I should get off. And while I'm standing there, obviously looking very puzzled, this Russian lady came up to me and she said in English, do you need help? And I said, yes, I do. I'm not sure which line I'm supposed to take and where I'm supposed to get off. And so she told me what to do and everything was fine. So it's been my experience everywhere I've gone in the world. If you just ask for help, a lot of times people will help you. They're more than happy to help you, no matter where you are in the world. So just ask for, for help if you need it. Or look like you're puzzled, and then they'll come up to you and ask you if you need help. Now, I mentioned kiosks and also ATMs that sometimes you can select which language you want the screen to show the information to you in. And when you do that, generally what's going to be on the screen for choices, instead of having the words English, Spanish, French, etc., it's going to show you a flag of the country where that language is spoken. So there'll be uh, the flag of Spain, and that means press that one for Spanish. There'll be the flag for France, press that one for French. Now, for my American friends, if you're looking for an American flag, you're probably not going to find one because the flag that's usually used to designate English is the British flag. So you want to look for that. Don't look for an American flag. If you want English, press on the British flag. And if you don't know what the British flag looks like, I would suggest you learn because you're going to need to press that button once in a while. Now, when you go to another country, more than likely, you're going to be able to spend the entire time there and speak nothing but English. And that's fine, you can do that, but it's a good idea to learn a few words in their language, just out of respect. And if you're going to do the bare minimum, I would say learn two words or phrases, the first being hello, and the second being thank you. With those two words or phrases, you will be able to cover most of the interactions that you have with people. When you go into a grocery store and you go through the checkout line, you can say hello to the cashier. And when you're leaving, you say thank you. Those are the only two things you would really have to say anyway to the cashier. And you're able to say both of them in their language. They'll appreciate that. 
And if you want to challenge yourself even more, learn a few more words or phrases from the language and try those out on the locals. They'll appreciate it. They definitely do appreciate the effort that you're putting into trying to speak their language and learn more about their language and their culture. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any tips of your own for managing with language when you're in another country, please leave those in the comments below. Until next time, let's get out there and travel.